Hey gang, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at another popular free energy device shown on YouTube. I decided to make this video after numerous requests by viewers and after reading viewer comments posted on other channels. Some of my viewers may have seen another YouTube channel show how you can harness radiated power from high tension power lines to make a spark plug continuously fire and also use the power to charge up a cell phone with the use of a flyback transformer. In this video we'll be duplicating what was done in the other video and I carefully reviewed the other YouTube channel's video to make sure everything was done properly with the setup that you see here. Luckily I had a lot of these things laying around. My friend had this old TV antenna. This is a 300 ohm antenna just like the one shown in the other video and the other video also uses a transformer right over here. This is a 300 ohm to 75 ohm transformer. The spark plug that was used, as you can see in the image over here, at the very, very bottom you could read E6 and then part of a T. So I cross-referenced the spark plug and I ended up with this one here. So it's the same thing. The spark plug is inserted into that opening where the 75 ohm connection would be, wedged between the pin and the outer ring. Over here you can see the wire is wrapped around the threads of the spark plug and this right here gets inserted into the earth or ground so when the voltage is detected it can flow through the spark plug and to ground. Now I'm going to take you to a location where there's a high tension power line which is perfect for this demonstration. If we have sparking occurring at the spark plug as shown in the other video then I'm going to disconnect this wire off of the spark plug and we're going to connect this high voltage ignition coil. It's around 30,000 volts. Between here and here is the 30,000 volt output. It jumps to the ground or negative. And then between here and here is the 12 volt DC input normally. So if we apply high voltage from the spark plug where it's sparking to the ignition coil, we should end up with the same lower voltage output. But of course, if we don't have any sparking taking place, we're not going to be doing any of these demonstrations. Instead of my GY6 ignition coil, I can also use the transformer you see right here in the event we have sparking. This is used to drive the backlight on an LCD TV. You can see there's many turns that are separated, a very fine wire, maybe 38 gauge or 40, and it goes all the way down. We would take this high voltage side connected to the spark plug. The wire would go here, and this end would go to the plug, it would go right through here, and then the output would be on the few turns of enamel wire, which is much heavier, right over here on this side. So this would give you the low voltage output, and over here would be connected to the high voltage. Okay, let me take you to the location where we're going to be performing the test. I'm going to take that end, insert it into the soil at the location. This will be suspended up in the air, and then I'm going to raise up the antenna and we're going to look right at the tip of the electrode there to see if there's any sparking taking place. If there isn't, the next test that we're going to do is to go from right here to ground using my digital multimeter. We're going to measure what kind of voltage we have, AC voltage, between the antenna and earth ground. And then if there is voltage, we're going to measure what the current is, short circuit current. Let's get going. Okay guys, I'm at the location of the high tension power line. I'm on a hill and I'm going to be driving the brass end of the earth ground that connects to the spark plug right there. Okay, right over here is the brass rod. Ground wire going to the spark plug. This is wedged inside between the center pin and the outer ring. And right over here is the antenna. I'm going to hold it by this handle, raise it up. As the spark plug is suspended in the air with the antenna all the way up, we're going to be focusing the camera on the electrode. Here we go. Okay, let's lift it all the way up. There we go. And let's take a look at the spark plug. And you can see the spark plug is doing, as expected, absolutely nothing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to be taking a voltage reading directly off the antenna to the digital multimeter on AC volts, and the other end, the black wire, is going to be going 
to that ground position in the earth. Let's see what kind of voltage we get when I lift up the antenna into the air. Here we go. Okay, I'm lifting it up. And you can see I'm getting around 30 volts standing six, seven feet tall from where I am. Now I'm going to measure the current going to ground, lifting it up. And we maxed out around seven microamps, which is not much to do anything with. In my opinion, based on my demonstration, I don't see any way that the cell phone charged as shown in the other video. There simply is not enough current going into that high voltage winding of the flyback to produce a lower voltage at a higher current to charge your cell phone. Okay, just for comparison, I'm going to be taking a reading using the same setup to earth ground. You can see the power lines straight ahead about the same distance away as I used on the high tension power line, probably about 40 feet from those lines. Let's take a reading on a 7620 line to see what kind of AC voltage we get. Got the thing up very high, just to show you it's there. And 0 0.33, 0 0.34 versus the 30 volts AC we saw on the high tension power line. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also, be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.